Why is plastic so bad? Yeah, well, it starts with BPA, right? Everybody knows BPA is bad, but a lot of people don't realize it's bad because it acts like estrogen in our body. So it disrupts our natural hormones. And the problem just at the fundamental level with that is scientists, they used to do these things called toxicology studies on BPA when they first developed it. By the way, in the 1920s, BPA was a birth control chemical. They researched it as birth wow. control. It was designed as birth control. Hey, what's up family? I'm Joe, I'm one half of Two Crazy Ketos, and I am here at the Hard to Kill Summit in Omaha, Nebraska, and we have the extreme pleasure of having Dr. Anthony J here, and uh, I'm excited about this because he likes to talk about one of my favorite subjects, plastic. Oh yeah. I never knew what plastic could do to us. And you know, we were the people who had plastic Tupperware, mm. put plastic in the microwave, drank out of plastic bottles. And we live in South Florida. So we would mm. go to the store and we'd buy the case of 24 water and then leave it in our car and pull it out whenever we needed to. And I actually heard you speak a couple of years ago and I started going, um, that's probably not a good idea what we're doing. So we wanted to have you talk a little bit about What's going on with the plastic? Why is plastic so bad? Yeah, well, it starts with BPA, right? Everybody knows BPA is bad, but a lot of people don't realize it's bad because it acts like estrogen in our body. So it disrupts our natural hormones. And the problem just at the fundamental level with that is scientists, they used to do these things called toxicology studies on BPA when they first developed it. By the way, in the 1920s, BPA was a birth control chemical. They researched it as birth wow. control. It was designed as birth control. The guys, the researcher's name was Charles Edward Dobbs, I believe, D-O-B-B-S. Um, he, he made it for birth control, right? So we all know it acts like estrogen. That's why it's bad. But the problem is it doesn't really kill cells. So if you do toxicology studies, the cells don't really die. So you could put a lot of BPA in a dish on live living cells and it looks safe, right? So it's, what's the problem with it? Well, it disrupts your hormones. It acts like estrogen. And it's not just BPA, unfortunately, because if you make BPA illegal, the companies switch over to BPS. And if they make BPS illegal, they make BPF. So it's kind of like the red dye, red dye number game. 10, red yeah, dye number yeah, 12. Yeah, they, they do the shell game with it. And so you can basically continue using these plasticizers that were developed initially in the 1920s as birth control chemicals. And you can, you know, just keep making plastic out of them. It's dirt cheap, right? So there's a lot of money behind this and a lot of influence, but you know, it's a problem. And then of course, even if you move away from the bisphenols, you still have the phthalates. So the plastics are, you can make plastics, by the way, without estrogen chemicals, just companies don't because it costs an extra penny per bottle or whatever. Wow. But there are, there are corn-based plastics out there that exist, not very common, but they exist that don't have estrogen. So what are some of the problems with actually like, consuming, like for example, getting water in the bottles all the time. I mean, yep. after hearing you a couple of years ago, one of the things that we ended up doing was, in most circumstances, we've ditched the bottle water and we started using a Berkey water filter. Yep. Figuring yep. like, Perfect. okay, at least we're, in, you know, if we're on the road or something like that, that's one thing, but yep. most of our, well, but what are some of the side effects that could be happening when we're cooking in plastic and buying all our water in plastic and everything? Yeah, well, it lowers your total testosterone and it lowers your free testosterone. And that's well established in research and you can do a personal test, right? Like I've seen this a lot. People just get rid of all the plastics and they stop drinking out of plastic. And by the way, usually they over, overhaul their personal care products too, because a lot of the personal care products, they use these same cheap petroleum based ingredients that act like estrogen in the personal care as fillers. Uh. They just use them as fillers. So they have like 90% of this is will just be cheap filler. And they'll put a little bit of fragrance in there, which is also fake and artificial oftentimes. But they'll, they'll put a little fragrance in there and that you know, carries a long ways because you got all this filler in there. But the point is, you know, like I've had people overhaul their personal care and their drinking water and get rid of the plastics and they've doubled their testosterone in six weeks. I've seen this wow. on numerous occasions. Numerous occasions. I had a guy on a podcast from the UK. Um, he, did a, he did an experiment and publicized it and that's basically what happened. His was about 50% increase. He didn't double his testosterone or 40% or something, but it was pretty high. And he was already a bit pretty high to start with. He was like 600. So to double your testosterone to be asking a lot, but wow. a lot of Americans are like, their testosterone, like for men, 
it's like 300 or something really low. And for women, you see a lot of like 10 or seven or five, like their testosterone also super low. Therefore their energy gets really low, their sex drive gets really low, they're more prone to depression. Even children with higher levels of BPA in their urine, higher levels of depression. So it's wow. causing a lot of health impacts, but it takes a long time to kind of see these health impacts. A lot of people ignore them because they don't think it's like a real danger because it's slow, right? And the scientists are saying, oh, it's not toxic. because It's not killing cells. Well, it's, yeah, but it's acting like estrogen. So you were actually talking on stage, talking about even the new car smell mm -hmm. in our car. Exactly. It's from actual plastic. Yeah, it's plastic and sunscreen. It's a combination. It's a combination of the oxybenzone from sunscreen and the plastic chemicals. And when you go in there, you think it's great, right? People love the new car smell, but it's tricking your brain into thinking there's, it's a hormone, right? It's a sex hormone. So your brain is, it's almost like a pheromone. It's an attraction, but it's not good for you. It's perverse because it's a petroleum based, artificial, not found in nature chemical that's tricking our brains. So what are some things we can do? Because obviously, you know, we can't just completely avoid all plastic. I mean, we have a saying on our channel, like strive for perfection. No, you're never going to achieve it. 90% is good enough. But yeah. what are some of the things, like if you had a list of, okay, start here, you're yeah. obviously not gonna get all plastic out of your life, but right. where would you start? Well, I, I personally make cold press coffee. I, I grind coffee beans, put it in a big glass jar, leave it overnight, filter out the grinds. And then I keep it cold in the fridge, giant glass thing of it. And then every day when I want coffee, I just pour a little in a cup, cut it with water because it's really concentrated. Heat it in the microwave, boom, I've got coffee really quick and it tastes better than normal coffee in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can also do pour overs and things. Coffee is a big one. Filter that drinking water. Use something like the Berkey. I love it. I have a Berkey. Uh, stainless steel water bottles and things. Again, once in a while you're traveling, you know, go, go get a plastic bottle. Don't be hypochondriac about it. But in general, you don't want to be making a habit of using all these plastics and heating them is much worse. So microwavable stuff, especially if it's liquid, you know, if it's a piece of dry, I don't know, dry bread or something in plastic, there's no leaching. People are always asking me that. What about my sandwich in plastic? Right. There's no leaching with dry products. But if you have a soup in a plastic Tupperware and you heat that in a microwave, of course, there's going to be a lot of leaching and oils too. A lot of people overlook the oils. If you're buying oil, like olive oil or something, Plastic versus glass is a huge difference with oils in terms of the leaching. Mm -hmm. So that's a few ideas. What about, you hear a lot of people talk about paper plates. Yeah, plastic coated. So yeah. like, you should we heat. never have them or just don't put heat on them? Or yeah, do you, should you, what about heated food on them? Once in a while, it's okay. Don't make a habit of it. Like. I don't know anybody that uses paper plates every day for their life, you know, like. <laughs> we have, I mean, we had three Just kids and you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, if we don't yeah. have to do dishes, great. But I mean, that's yeah. one of the things, you know, we tried to shift over to more of some of the ones that are just paper. There without, are just paper ones, exactly. Like, without the coating. But I, I didn't ones. even know about the fact that, okay, so they're plastic coated and that, so just putting hot food yep. onto that will leach, leach that plastic up. into oh, our sure. food. Oh, yeah. Wow. And when you look at the data, even at room temperature, it's kind of surprising, like these bottles of water that just sitting at room temp, it's surprising how much phthalates are in there and how much BPA gets in there, you know? And again, scientists will tell you it's not toxic, so it's okay, but, and the government safety limits are way up here when it starts causing cancer, but I'm not worried about causing cancer. I'm worried about disrupting your hormones and that's pretty low levels. It doesn't take much. Now, is there any place that people could like see any uh, information from that you share on a podcast oh, or anything sure. like that? Well, I have a YouTube channel, Dr. Anthony J. Okay. So I do sometimes do videos on there. I'm not really consistent, but I have a lot of information there and I have a website, ajconsultingcompany.com. Okay, we'll leave links for all that down below. Well, Dr. Anthony J, thank you so much for joining us. So if you like seeing videos like this, please do us a favor, take a look at some of the videos. We're gonna link right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video that I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head that way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, hit that little bell button so that you are notified every time we upload a new video. And until next time, bye.